You know, I tend to be pretty skeptical of ancient high technology. And to be clear, by ancient high technology, I mean like combustion engines, computers, electronics. You know, we know the Baghdad battery was was quite possibly an actual battery. And we know the Greeks had like the, the alio pile, however you pronounce it, some, some primitive steam engine toy thing. Anything past that, man, and I'm like, uh, I don't know for sure. Now, to be clear also, I do believe the ancients had tech that we don't know that they had, that we don't ascribe to them. It's just, at a certain point, I'm like, ah, come on, man, I don't really know. But there are sites, like Baalbek, that make me, they kind of put me on my back foot there. They, they force me to, like, reevaluate it and say, well, to, to be clear, I guess the best way of putting it would be, I don't feel like the people could have done the things at Baalbek with the technology I'm comfortable ascribing to them, right? So it does put me in a position where I'm like, I don't really know. I, I think that there's a mystery here. But Baalbek's impressive visually. You can see it. You can take a picture of it. You show somebody else and they can be like, whoa. What I'm going to talk to you about here isn't a site. It's a language, the Aymara language. And tucked away in the Aymara language is an algorithm that is so computer-like that when Ivan de Guzman de, Ro Ivan Guzman de Rojas, that's his name, sorry, um, when he first discovered it, he was so blown away by it that he actually used it to make computer software. And that, well, I, to a guy like me, that's way more impressive even than the big rocks, which the big rocks impress me a lot. So let's talk about this for a minute. Hi, my name's Dan, and welcome to The Dunking. You know, back in 1979, when I was still drinking chocolate milk and running around in my underoos, Ivan Guzman de Rojas had already discovered the Amara language was unique and was already digging into the enigma. Its strange syntax immediately got him working on the language, and soon he came to the conclusion that, quote, Amara is a matrix and its syntax is defined in the array. This allowed him to create a simple program that would generate Amara phrases in both Amara and Spanish. Now, the nature of the language allowed it to be seamlessly incorporated into a computer, and it was used to make a translation program that, for the time, was the best multi-language translating software available in the world. This is something I wanted to get out of the way for the skeptics really quickly. This wasn't pareidolia. They, this algorithm was put to use quickly and was used in the real world to create translating software. And this actually used three-point logic instead of the simple two-point logic in a normal binary system zero means no and one means yes or whatever this actually has yes no and maybe and that's you might say well that's not how a computer talks well yes but three-point logic systems had been around three-point logic software excuse me had been around for like 20 years at this point so it wasn't brand new all right and again it incorporated very seamlessly he was able to very quickly make a prototype using the algorithm that he discovered, just tucked away in the language. And by 1985, his prototype was able to translate Aymara, Spanish, and German, both directions. The software was dubbed Adamiri, and the history of the software itself is kind of sad. This story has some parallels to Gary Kildall, if you know who he is. I mean, it's sad, but like, originally Guzman programmed this on a Wang computer, and Wang computers are not some spicy YouTuber's merch. A Wang computer was a company from the 80s, and in the 70s and the 80s, look, man, there were a lot of different companies that had operating systems, that different, different programming styles, different versions of BASIC, different versions of Logo, different versions of real simple, common languages, and all of them had different machine languages, so... Programming wasn't quite as cut and dry as it is today, which is not cut and dry now, but if you were porting something from one system to another, man, it could be hairy because there was documentation was in the form of paper, man. There was no internet to help. So anyway, putting it on a Wang computer was a bad thing because, uh, well, first of all, Wang went under after a little while. They, were, they only offered him basically a pittance to do the work that he needed to. And even though the, the algorithm was already there, the lexicon, right? He has to put all the Spanish words in, all the Aymara words in, if he wants to do German and English and Portuguese on down the road. All these have to be painstakingly, the words have to be added into the system. Just because it has a good algorithm that's magically there doesn't mean it magically learns words on its own either, right? So we switched over to the IBM PC and the software found a whole lot more support, but it's still not remotely enough for it to fulfill its potential. 
But in the early 2000s, it was the fastest and most thorough multi-language translator available, and it had been horribly underfunded at that point still. In 1993, for example, CompuServe tested it and found that it was the only true multi-language translator available at the time. It was utilized in several commercial applications, mostly for the translation of manuals and other reading materials. And in 2001, it was capable of translating Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, and English, all using Aymara as the bridge language, the mother tongue of the software, as Guzman put it. Now, Guzman battled for funding and kept trying to get more people to focus on Automari until he passed in 2022, but it does seem the software fell into disuse. In 2001, with a then top of the line 800 megahertz Pentium processor, it was capable of translating 700 words a second. A second in 2001 in multiple languages. That is impressive. It worked so well because of this way the Aymara language was structured. And that secret was something that Guzman uncovered when he was teaching Aymara children. He noticed that they consistently had problems with Western mathematics, in particular things like 3 times 4 and 4 times 3 both being the same. They thought they were different because of the different order of the numbers. So he decided that this was a linguistic thing and he dug into their language and Boy, oh boy, was he impressed. He found five things that he decided were going to be useful in order for him to make this computer language. First of all, Imar has the trivalent logic, the three-point logic I mentioned earlier. This is very unique. In fact, Google's AI claims that there are no trivalent logic languages in existence, truly, but clearly Guzman claimed there was, and he seems to have backed up his claims, so I'm going to think that the AI is probably a little bit off on this one. Now... Aymara sentences end with one of two operators. One means this maybe, and one means certainly. And this allows for that three-point logic, because you either have certainly yes, certainly no, or maybe. And that is really a huge part of the secret here. Not just that, but that's a huge part of the secret. The next two things are basically tied together. One is the longevity of the language itself, despite attempts to completely stomp the Aymara people out, and several attempts to incorporate their culture into Spanish and other different communities in the area. They seem to have had no problem keeping that language intact. In addition to that, it has been unchanged throughout that. There are different regional dialects. However, the language syntax never changes, even when it takes in new sayings from other languages and that's where things get really weird i look at this guy for example <laughs> the chinese language always has its verbs at the end generally speaking they talk like yoda go here you do right it's always the end is the verb but in this case he took an American saying, <laughs> and he's just, he's using the verb right where it belongs if he was speaking it in English. Not an American saying necessarily. Yeah, he is. You're not hearing that on Doctor Who, are you? Anyway, my point here is that that's a very unique feature of the Aymara language, something else that Dr. Guzman noticed. The next thing he picked up on was called agglutination, and it means the language builds words from smaller words as a rule, like German does. And it's also a language filled with puns. It means it's more capable of handling those maybe statements in that three-point logic I mentioned earlier. And when Guzman laid out the matrix and saw how the system formed an array, he knew he had something here. And for the rest of his life, in his spare time, he tried to make Adamari the premier language translating software on the planet. And in some points in history, he actually succeeded. Aymara is spoken by over a million indigenous Americans in Bolivia, Chile, and Peru today. There are regional dialects, but all follow the same patterns, and as a result, all are compatible with each other. Learning one of the dialects enables you to communicate with people from any of the dialects. The Aymara people have a long-lived culture, and they are well known throughout the region. There's a handful of theories as to where the language came from. Of course, all of them are from the immediate region like Titicaca or Peru or Chile, but the origin is lost to time. None of the deities or folk heroes of the Aymara are credited with teaching in the language, but the best candidate to me would seem to be Thanupa, the one demigod who is credited with teaching the culture and agriculture to the Aymara. 
So Tanupa was also said to be able to command volcanoes and lightning. So he's kind of, that's the point in my opinion where you can't really learn a whole lot more from a story. And there's nothing that says he specifically taught the people writing. He's just the only real teacher in their history that I could find. So, or in their mythology, excuse me, whatever you want to look at it. So, kind of seems like it's a dead end there. You, back somewhere, they came up with this language or it, it, was, it became a thing. Now, there's another unique concept that the Aymaran people have. It's called Ani, A-Y-N-I. It's a little hard to explain because it's a unique concept, but... It is a kind of a combination of like the hippie idea that everything's connected and this reciprocity thing that like you help me and I help you and inherent like community. We work together. I think you might get the idea. It's spiritual and it's like a physical. Like in some tiny communities up there still, they say that I'll be the only law in a village. It's like Ani, we work together and that's that. Um, so... My point here with bringing that up is it's kind of funny that the idea that everything's connected, that everything works together, that we're all one, seem that, that's a philosophical idea in their be belief system, and it shows up in their language just, like, inherently tucked away in there. There it is. It's, it is. We are all connected. It's kind of crazy. It almost would imply that the language was manufactured to me. And... To support that is the fact that it has the three-point logic. It, it is literally the only language on the planet that has that that's not manufactured. Every other language that has three-point logic, well, it tend to be computer languages. There's a couple that are manufactured human languages, it looks like, from what I was looking around. But I didn't dig too deep into them. The fact of the matter is, three-point logic does not normally come up in human languages. But here it is, and it's uniquely useful to do something that philosophically the Aymaran people would be very proud to know that they were facilitating. And that brings me back to the ancient high tech thing again, because I am hard pressed to explain how an ancient language from the mountains of Bolivia would contain three point logic and have its syntax laid out in an array and also happened to never change its syntax and also incorporate puns and well, be so useful and so compatible with computer languages that it's used to translate human languages from one to the other as a bridge, as a mother tongue again, as Guzman put it. I, I'm, I, I can't really explain that. I'll be honest with you. That's really difficult for me to tell you how that exists because this is, it's not one unique feature and it's not a bunch of features that we see all over the world, but they just happen to all line up in this one spot here. It's like numerous unique features dumped into one language and it all happens to facilitate something very technologically, very technologic-y. That's a word. Technologic-y word. I'll, I'll put it on the fucking screen right there. Hmm, now what? Anyway... I think you get what I'm getting at here. This is weird to me, man. This isn't something you can just explain away, in my opinion. You can't just be like, well, you know, it's just it's a coincidence. You can say that if you want, but to me, that's, that's absurd. That's absurd. One thing that's worth pointing out here, I, I know the man doesn't really need me to toot his horn, but this is something that I got from Graham Hancock's Fingerprints of the Gods, by the way, is where I first got the beginning of this rabbit hole. So... There's a lot of details in Graham Hancock's work. He puts his information will be so dense that when you're reading it, you need to pay attention because quite often what you're reading, if you just like look past it or like take three or four points together, there's entire freaking rabbit holes that you're just going to miss because he, again, he packs his information dense. It's not, it's not his fault. It's, it's like... It, there's a lot there. Look into these things. If you've already read the book, read it another time, man, because there's there's stuff there. Anyway, that's enough of that. No, I'll toot my own horn. Hi, my name's Dan. I've got links down below to support the channel. I'm going to be at the Cosmic Summit this summer. There's a link down there to buy a ticket for that. I'm going to be doing all kinds of babbling in the near future. You want to be a channel member? You want to be a Ko-Fi supporter? You want to be a Patreon supporter? You want to see me do a Fortnite dance? Tough shit on the last one, but in the other ones, you can click buttons down below. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here and we will see you next time.